Richard the Whale, 2019 uh, edition. We are filming right now. I wanted to uh, put this video together really quick for our our team because you guys are doing a lot of cool stuff and I don't think people know about it. So I want to make sure that we explain all the all the finer points of the beer and kind of what the goals were and then maybe run through Colorado Smuggler and Laurel Obligation and uh, White Claws. Uh -huh. And then uh, also talk about um, a real nice surprise. Okay. Sound like a plan? Sounds awesome. Sounds fun. Yeah, we'll be quick. We'll be quick. So you can, the audience cannot uh, lose their excitement levels. So uh, walk through this year's Richard, um, the base variant, and I know there's some changes. So can you guys walk through it so the staff's a little more versatile? You said it's the best year ever, Josh. Speak up. Well, it's always the best year ever. Okay. Um, we had a little more diverse portfolio of barrel types, I would say. So we used some Breckenridge barrels. There was a Blanton's barrel in there. And uh, still, Heaven Hill barrels yeah. was the, still the dominant dominant one. Um, we back blended it with some unaged beer a little bit more aggressively than we have in the past as well, which gives a much smoother kind of transition for all those flavors. I would say the mouthfeel is also the strongest it's ever been as well because of that as well. I think it's, yeah, it's, this year is as big as it's ever been, you know, in, in terms of ABV and just body is huge. I mean, it's it's a, the best mouthfeel we've ever gotten out of Richard for sure. Yeah, so, I think it's noticeably better. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is a lot, I think. Just smoother. So that's exciting. And then, you know, on the variance side, um, we've got... We, before we go to variance, can you guys give me just, like, if somebody... I'm a server in Solon, and somebody's asking me about Richard, how would you guys describe the beer? Real quick. So, I mean, you know, just to the, touch on Richard on the whole, like, it's kind of our biggest project of the year. It's a year-long year process to make Richard. Um, it's a huge American Imperial Stout. It's, you know, in that 105 to 11% ABV range. And it's just lots of roasted and chocolate malts to give it just a huge, I mean, it's huge, thick, dark, chewy, and a little bit of barrel on there. So we take that, we take that base that we brewed, you know, over a year ago, put it into, like you said, Heaven Hill barrels and Breckenridge barrels. We age it out. We're kind of checking on it from like six months on, and then we try and find that sweet spot where we want to pull it, and then we blend it all together. Um, if there's any barrels we don't love, we usually keep them out of the mix, but this year was pretty good. I mean, mm -hmm. everything was pretty solid, so. Awesome. Yeah, I would say like eight to 10 months usually is how long Richard stays That's the a sweet spot. All right, walk me into the coffee variant. And we can be quick, I know there's videos coming out on Facebook and stuff, so. Uh, Geisha Village Auction Lot number 11 is the coffee that we got from JBC this year. Uh, it's one of the most prestigious coffees we've ever used. Two years ago, we used Geisha Coffee. We absolutely adored it, and so we just decided that was going to be the coffee. A similar coffee was going to be for the regular coffee variant instead of making so, it uber. Is it wrong to say it's the best coffee in the world? Uh, I mean, I think the coffee review gave it like a 94. It's one of the hardest get, hardest coffees to get. Most expensive coffees to get. In the yeah, world. it's like very yeah. expensive. There was another coffee, like same bean, different auction lot number that was the most expensive coffee that's ever been sold. It was like eighty five dollars a pound. That's not the one that we got, but we got ours a is similar like seventy five bucks a pound. It's crazy. Ours was yeah. seventy dollars a pound, so I imagine JBC. I think the average auction lot was like forty dollars a pound or something like that. So JBC spent at least forty dollars a pound. So when you're talking about this with your customers, I know behind the scenes, this is like literally the best coffee in the world and the best beer in the world, and it's just making this. Well, and beer. JBC is, I think, right now getting named one of the top roasters in the country for being like fair trade and all that stuff. It's their next level. So we basically right. take Richard, we infuse the coffee into it. Yeah, and I was just gonna say JBC, if you're not familiar, we've worked with them for over four years now. They're out of Madison, Wisconsin. Very small shop, but we have a great relationship with them. And it's cool because, you know, Josh will reach out and say, hey, Richard's coming down the line. What great coffee do you guys have for us to use this year? And, you know, they'll, they'll direct us to the right coffee. And then they also kind of schedule the roasting of it. So it gets roasted. Basically it got roasted with, like two days before the, we got it. Yeah. And then it's here and we get it in the beer within like a week. So it's just. Yeah. Like, like and I'm grinding it today and we're making yeah. it. My today. expectation is that will be one of our highest rated beers we ever put out. It's gonna Coffee be, Richard is usually the one that people like the most. It's, and this yeah. is going to be the best one by far. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's variant. So we have regular coffee and. 
Uh, then we have hazelnut and chocolate as well. So we're gonna roast some hazelnuts, a lot of hazelnuts, um, and we'll add some chocolate into the to the base Richard and kind of create that you know a Nutella like uh, character is kind of the target. So that should be fun. A little bit, be a little bit of sweetness there, a little more decadent than than the base or the. Uh, yeah, definitely going more to the dessert side. Yeah, a little bit. And then the feature, the gold ticket, there'll only be a couple hundred bottles of it, but we're gonna do a uh, vanilla and coconut blend, and that'll be, yeah, literally 200 bottles and some draft, but yeah. that'll be 500 fun. milliliter bottles, so yeah. bigger ones and uh, the yeah. other ones. But. Fantastic. The, uh, I think that one's gonna go nuts too. Um, so excited about that. That's gonna be a different bottle too. It'll be a jet black bottle. I think people will be really excited about it. Um, talk about me, we, we're, so guys, we're doing, Let's walk through the other beers that day, so people don't even know these exist right now. Let's tell everybody about that. Right, I mean, so Richard's a fun, it's a fun weekend here, it's a fun event, we've really blown it up this year too, so we're gonna, we wanted to throw some other fun beers into the mix, I mean, not all of us can drink Imperial Stout all day, so, you know, it's kind of nice to have some, some other options. So we've got a couple of hazy beers coming out that day as well, we're gonna have uh, Laurel Obligation and Colorado Smuggler, um, we're kind of... We're, we're getting a little we're getting a little freer with our our hopping schedules on some of these beers we just we like what we've been doing but we kind of want to push it a little further and and increase the pounds per barrel like talking even like doubling what we've been doing so yeah well because those two beers like lincoln did a really good job making them and so on so we're kind of just taking that and adding more hops more yeah and we've got the new infuser that we use makes it easy to really get the most out of those hops so uh those are going to be those are going to be screaming yeah, like 100 cases, I think, is what we're doing. It'll be small runs. Yeah, unfortunately, the more hops you put in, the less beer you get out. But the beer that comes out, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. So two bangers um, along with that. And then we have an experimental um, white stout coming out of Solon. You guys want to hit on that? Yeah, you know, that was kind of sparked. White Claws. White Claws. Yeah, <laughs> the label is classic. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, uh, Lincoln and uh, Matt Berkey were out in Colorado and, and had a really dynamite white stout uh, and, and got inspired by it. So they wanted to make one here. And, so uh, we're that's in the works up in Solon right now. But so white stout, what is that? I mean, you're kind of making basically a pale beer and trying to create a stout character in it. So they're using cocoa nibs and they're using coffee to kind of create some of that roasted character. Are they gonna throw almonds in there too? They're talking about almonds. I think that's on the table as well. And so. lactose. So they're trying to make it so anybody that has any allergies can't drink this beer. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's limited, that, right? I mean, we're only really talking thirty it'll cases. It'll be yeah, it'll be a yeah. super small run, but I mean, it, it'll be a fun one. It's a good time of year for it. The label's hilarious as well, so might be playing a little on the white cloth. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty awesome though. And then uh, yeah, so I think we have uh, you know I'm off camera here, but we're gonna have basically you know six or seven unbelievable offerings that day, and I think the two new hazy beers are gonna really change the game. So be ready for those um, with your customers and be able to talk about them. But uh, both those beers, you've already had them, but they're they're world class, and to, just to think that we're gonna amp up the game there, I'm, I'm really excited. Last but not least, a real nice surprise. This is a surprise; people don't even know we're doing this beer, so that's gonna come out the weekend before Christmas. Yeah, and so you know, we made a real nice surprise last year. Um, we're just we're gonna turn it into kind of an annual uh, surprise. Surprise, yeah. I mean, <laughs> so we're just gonna again go crazy with the hops. That'll be one where we'll probably just we'll just blow the budget and just. Yeah, it's gonna be a ridiculous amount of hops going into that beer, but we're just gonna go big. It'll be a you know hopefully in that nine percent range, and then we're just gonna hop heck out of it and be a fun label, good little Christmas offering. Yeah, and that'll coincide with the sweater party. Yes, uh, Soul and Sweater Party on the twenty first. So be there, people. Josh, what else is new? Anything? I don't think so. I think that's everything. What are you super jacked about right now, Richard? I'm very excited about Richard. It always takes me like I don't know three, four weeks probably to like get it all done. So seeing it kind of come to fruition is really nice. Awesome. A lot of, lot of racking barrels and grinding coffee beans and roasting hazelnuts and yeah, a lot of fun. Hand dipping. Hand wax dipping, yeah. A lot of fucking 1,500 bottles or whatever it is. Hand, yeah, hand labeling. It's a lot yeah. of 3,000 bottles. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Andy? I think that's it. All right. Well, I got a few things. Just uh, as a quick heads up, um, we do have uh, tickets left for bottle pickup for both locations. And then there are probably, I want to say, 75 brunch tickets left. We definitely we upped this year by like 3x of what we had done before. So we just made a lot more beer. So if your customers are interested, please let them know. And uh, let's sell some.
let's sell some tickets and get people excited. Thanks for watching the video. I think I got you under 10 minutes here. Um, appreciate everything you guys are all doing. Hopefully this was helpful because there's just so much going on and uh, appreciate you guys. Cheers. See ya. Bye. Bye. Andy bye. Says bye. <laughs> Even if it was <laughs>